Welcome to Skill-Based Art, a learning resource for art students and artist teachers. My name is Martino Correa and today I'll be leading you through a drawing of a plaster cast of Caesar using the sight size method. Sight size is a method that was developed somewhere around the 16th or 17th century um, by portrait painters. It's a process where you set up your sitter right next to your painting or your drawing. So basically what you get is a one-to-one -one comparison of drawing or painting to the uh, subject. <clears throat> Here we're using a cast. A cast was a learning tool used by um, all the ateliers and even the uh, early Renaissance studios. Uh, all students would start quite young, working from the flat, usually doing drawings of, <clears throat> copies rather, of drawings by the maestro, moving to working from frescoes, that is copying the frescoes, and then having casts to draw, so casts of Renaissance sculpture and Greek sculpture. And of course this process became um, codified in the ateliers of the 19th century. So in today's ateliers in the uh, 21st century use the same uh, process, working with uh, cast to teach students how to draw, but also how to paint uh, from life. So today we're going to be using pretty simple tools, our gesso cast of Caesar, a eraser, a 2B pencil, and a knitting needle. All right, so the first thing you want to do is to set up our drawing board and cast in relation to each other properly so that you get a good drawing. What I'm looking for is the uh, drawing board to be totally straight up and down and st sitting about mm, three, half to three quarters of the way behind or into the cast. So my drawing board is right through here. It sits somewhere in the middle of the cast. Um, if it comes a little, it can come a little bit closer, a little bit further away, and it will just change the size of the uh, drawing in relation to the cast. It's actual size. The next thing I want to do is I want to do a plumb line, which is a straight up and down line that's going to be drawn on the paper and that I'm going to be looking for on the actual cast. These are points that might line up and I can use as um, reference points when I'm doing the drawing. So to do that, a good way to do that is just to make sure your, the edge of your board is straight up and down. You can use, also use a, a level. Um, all I'm doing is measuring from the edge of my board in this case and uh, Assuming, I'm assuming the edge of my board is straight up and down, and I'll just use these lines here as a, as a guide. So I measured just the length of my knitting needle in from the, from the edge of the board. That should get me pretty good. Somewhere up here. I don't, I'm not using a ruler, I'm just using my freehand. So then I want to come back and I can just check with my uh, knitting needle, make sure that that line is straight up and down. So if I'm here holding the knitting needle up, it's, those points are lining up okay. And the other thing is to make sure that where I'm standing is totally perpendicular to the board. So if the board is like this, I need to be looking at it totally perpendicularly. All right, so I'm stepping back and I'm just checking at the spacing of the uh, easel legs to make sure that distance between the spacing of the legs between the front leg and the back leg is equal on both sides and I'm ready to go. So first thing I want to do is to um, decide on my plumb line on the, on the cast and for my, where I'm sitting it's, uh, there's a nice line going through the middle of his face which kind of touches this indent up here and cuts through his nose and the middle of his lips. That's one good one. Uh, there's often more than one uh, plumb line. Another good one can be the uh, corner of the eye socket here or here or the corner of the nose or the corner of the mouth. You're trying to get as many different points as possible lined up when you're holding up your, your knitting needle or your plumb line to the cast. Let's see. Right, I'm going to go with the one that th this high point here comes through 
pretty much from where I'm standing goes through the middle of the lip here. You know, some of these points on the eye and close to the close to the corner of the eye as well. So you're going to move over a little bit. Instead of that high point, I'm going to take that, hook, that point on. Next, one step down from the high point. So the next thing I want to do is to mark off um, the top and bottom. So I'm just holding up the plumb line here to mark off the my point where the top might be. I'm kind of guessing. So I'm basically holding this up and going across from the uh, cast onto my paper. I'm measuring a top across from the top of the cast onto my paper to check the line I just placed and it looks pretty good. I'm making sure that I'm uh, holding my knitting needle horizontally. Next thing I want to go and mark the bottom of the cast where it's again just looking directly across from the bottom of the cast along the horizontal line of my knitting needle to where it's hitting the paper. Somewhere about here. I come back and check that. So just like a good carpenter, you want to measure twice and cut once. So I'm measuring a couple of times. Um, it's a little high. Could come down a tiny bit. So what I'll be working on, focusing on today, is the big blocking. So getting the big portions and the shapes placed before any refining is done. So I'll check that uh, bottom mark again. It seems pretty good. The next thing I want to do is to measure uh, totally a vertical between the top point and the bottom point. So I'm measuring on my cast, placing the top of the needle at the top of the head of Caesar and my thumb on the bottom and bringing that across and that measurement should be the same if I did it correct. It seems like it's a little bit big on my drawing. So I'll have to double check those marks, double check the bottom and the top. The top might come down a tiny bit. <clears throat> so I'll go for checking my measurement again just from top to bottom. It's pretty good. Good enough for now, we'll say. All right, so I know that this point here, my plumb line, uh, is not the highest point. The highest point is just the point next to it here. So plumb line kind of cuts through there. And then from there, it drops straight down. It touches the corner of the eye on the left and the nostril on the left and the high point of the top lip, lip on the left. So keep that in mind. Um, now there's different ways you can do it. You can go and place some big vertical alignments or you can set the outside uh, proportions. We'll do that as I'll measure the extreme out, outer points. So that's going to be a measurement from my plumb line, which is the corner of the eye out to the edge of the ear here, and out to the edge of the ear on the left. <clears throat> so I just, I know my, my plumb line is sitting, if I, if I move it down from the top, sitting right on the corner of that eye on the left. So I measure from that point out to the ear, and then I bring it onto my paper, put the point of my knitting needle on the plumb line, and my thumb 
gonna indicate some point somewhere around here. <clears throat> so I'll come back and check that. Pretty close, could go in a little bit. And all that's telling me is just that's where the, more or less where the ear is going to be. Somewhere around there. <clears throat> I can do the other, same thing on the other side. Just from my plumb line out. Right somewhere around here. Come back and check that. Now what I'll do is I'll check the distance between those two points to make sure that uh, they're okay. So I'm just measuring from ear to ear and bringing that across and hopefully somewhere in the ballpark. Yep. Um, looks like it could be a little bit bigger on my drawing. So I'll just double check which one's not quite working. back out a bit. Let's see how that does. That seems to be working. Okay, so that gives me the outer extremes. Um, next thing I'll do, I think, is I'll start to indicate maybe the tops of the ears, because the, the tops of the ears line up nicely with the top of the brow of the eye. So those points lining up, uh, very useful things to place down. You want to try and get as many things lining up as possible. So I can just use my leading needle scanning across horizontally. Let's see where those points are. That's going to be the where the ear kind of touches the hair. Either side. Looks all right to start. <coughs> somewhere over here as the ear comes in a bit. And the brows, they're slanted, but we can just get a general placement of them. So let's see where just above, above those points. They're just slightly above the, the ear points. Or they start off just slightly above the ear points. <clears throat> so this eye point kind of starts there and then angles up. So that's that corner there on the eye.
All right, we just look at the bottom of the ears and how they line up with the nose. Somewhere around there. Come back and check that. It looks like it makes the ear a bit big, so I can see this is the, right away it was in the wrong spot. Higher up. So I'm thinking very um, objectively. I'm just trying to place uh, high points and low points. I'm not thinking about the shape of an ear or what a nose looks like. I'm just analyzing in terms of um, angles and, and lines, really. Placement of, of high points and low points. So it looks pretty good. Same spot. We can also come back and check these distances, you know, measuring these smaller distances, but the smaller the measurement, the more the margin of error is. So I always try to get big measurements to start with. And then you can refine as you get more and more information. You can refine and, and your eye eventually will be more accurate than the measurement. But at this stage I'm just getting these big kind of placements. So yeah, ears more or less in the right spot. I can do I can they look a little bit big, so I'm just gonna do a measurement. Yeah, they seem a little bit So I'm just going to recheck the, the top and bottom. You can also use a thread. The digging is not quite long enough. You can use a, <clears throat> a thread like this and just measure across. It's longer. Like the ears need to come down a little bit on the top. Yeah, tiny bit. So that measurement wasn't quite in the right spot. that and then of course the eyes will have to come down a bit this will come down a tiny bit So the type of line I'm using too, it's not a uh, sharp, um, specific line. Um, usually when you're writing, you have a point that's like this, but here what we're doing is we're using what's called a drawing point and we're holding it 
like so, so that um, when you place your hand down, it's just a light mark that's being placed, you know, pivoting on the knuckle of your finger. So it's something like that. We call them ghosty, sketchy lines versus something that's harder. So it just makes a, it um, for a nice look. It's nothing too distinct or harsh at this point, easy to erase and easy to move around too. <clears throat> So then for the so then the nose is somewhere the shadow here on the bottom of the nose is somewhere above the uh, line cutting across at the ears. And then I just want to check my plumb line. The line comes down here, the nose shadow is somewhere around here, and it cuts up to the plumb line somewhere around there. <clears throat> okay. Next thing I could do is probably get the chin where the chin is. back and check that either with the maybe or the string just allows you to have a nice longer horizontal it's pretty good I'll check it against the top of the cast as well so from the top of the cast to the chin looks pretty good Nicely too with our plumb line, this point, at this point here at the plumb line, it starts to turn up. So I'm starting to put this change of direction here, you know, over here, over here, the change of direction. Here's what I've got here. So I'm just, you know, analyzing these in terms of like, uh, there's a straight line and then what's the angle that's coming off there for the, uh, the chin. Right. <clears throat> I want to check now also maybe the distance from the chin to the bottom of the cast, you know, looks okay. All right, something different. Um, I think I'll just do a little bit more of the outside of the cast. So the distance between the, the ears. So side of the cast here. And it actually, your actually drops down, something like that. side it's a little here. It's angling up a bit. Here too the ear kind of angles down. Then if you look at there's a real real sense of blockiness here from the side of the head it goes up. Change the direction there, change the direction again there. So these big angles, they're, um, they're in nature. They're not as obvious. These casts have been, um, they're interpretation in nature. So they've been turned into works of art for us, which makes it really uh, important to study them, to see how master artists worked um, in the European tradition with uh, nature and interpreting it into a work of art. So looking for these, this structure, right? Uh, the structure of this figure, the big uh, straight lineiness that gives it the strength 
of character that we see. Okay, so we could put some of those points in, so measuring across. I'm just going to do horizontal alignments. So. Right, it goes somewhere to about here, and it goes over. Probably a little bit too much of an angle. I do want to just double check to make sure I'm keep, keeping enough width. So just reestablishing my plumb line and seeing if it's far enough out. It looks like it's okay. <clears throat> On top the plumb line can come somewhere like this. A little bit is somewhere in here. Keeping this, you know, really loose. This is just approximating. You're thinking very much like a sculptor at this point, you know, chiseling out the big outside edges. So I'll leave that. I'm going to maybe bounce around. I like to kind of change things up, not focus too much on one area. Try to bring the whole drawing up as a unit. So I'm going to come down and and place the uh, outside of the jawline. So we know where the bottom of the ears are, that's where the jawline starts. We can use the vertical of the knitting needle to see how far in from the outside of the cast, where the top of the ear is, how far in that is. So I'm just measuring this distance to see more or less where the chin is, somewhere down here. So we're about here starts. So we've got that displacement method. I can also measure in from my plumb line. So the more information you get, of course, the more ways you can take measurements and the more accurate your drawing hopefully will get. So it looks like that was a little bit too much. This needs to come out a tiny bit. And then this will come over a little bit. And you can check that from my plumb line. So when I'm measuring, I have to make sure that I'm, my vision is perpendicular to the cast and also perpendicular to my knitting needle, that the knitting needle is not skewed anyway, right? And I just bring that measurement across, see how it works. Looks like it needs to go over even a tiny bit more. <clears throat> right. 
And then I'll just measure across to get the other side and see how that lines up with what I have on the other side. Seems pretty good. <clears throat> this jawline kind of comes in from about there. The neck, so I'm just gonna kind of eyeball where that neck is, it's somewhere about here. Then the neck on the other side, <clears throat> I can just measure straight across from that uh, point where the neck and jawline meet. Looks like I've come in a bit too much. check is how far over my plumb line is so join the next is somewhere over here the lips and the sh bottom of the shadow on the nose might be good. by working with my eye that she needs to go up a little bit. Put the 
shadow cuts across here. I'm just going to try and finish drawing up the, the width of the nose. up and get the bottom of the eyes. Some of this I could probably do, do by, by eye, just using my eyes to measure. So this kind of comes down a bit. place the, the outside edge of that eye socket on the left is pretty much in line with the top of the ear. It just comes under the top of the ear up there. measurement but I can just take my knitting needle <clears throat> and just see if it's in the ballpark. Maybe a little bit big. So now I'm going to continue on with the I think the outside of the cast on the right will get some of that placed in. So I'm just going to mark off the big change of direction. With the ear. Something 
So from this point here, the, there's a change of direction. The side of the head moves in a little bit. About that angle, yeah. About to that point that I've marked. I'm going to double check that. It's pretty close. Let's go ahead and put that in. And then from that point, there's not a change of direction from here to here and then up to the top. <clears throat> That point about here ish. It's all very general, you know, to try and be accurate, but um, you refine the drawing as it goes along. That seems pretty good. There to there. <clears throat> have this line curving slightly this way. All right. I I'll just finish blocking in the, the outsides of the ears. about that wide, something like that. We're just going for the big, simple construct, right? So just getting in just the big edges as if, again, as if you're a sculptor. <clears throat> doesn't look quite right. So this the getting the width of the ear and the side of the cheekbone. It is out pretty good.
All right, let's get the lips in. So if you're, always, if you're wondering for what to do next, always say, well, it's obviously missing. So lips are pretty important. We can get those in. I can, again, do my horizontal alignment. Uh, looks like the, you know, they're very close to the bottom of the nose. The bottom of the nose might need to go up a little bit. What I'll do is I get the little half shadow. under his bottom lip. Looks a bit low. So I can also measure up from the chin. It's measuring it okay. As you move into these smaller measurement, your eye is going to be more accurate than the measuring. Just place the lips using my eye, and how far it is away from the shadow. So the high point of the lip is there, sitting right on the plumb line. It's down, and then the other on the other side. It's a little bit higher. So I'm now looking at these tiny negative shapes, spaces between the actual shapes that I'm drawing. And then how far out does that go? Somewhere about here. I can see how that uh, corner of the lips or mouth on the left, where it lines up with how far away from my plumb line it is. I just eyeball it. <coughs> Put something down so I have something to respond to. a little bit big considering yeah, it comes just a bit past the corner of the nose. Closer to there. Then I can also take a measurement from that point to the corner of the jawline to make sure that's okay. Yeah, that seems alright. And from the jawline to the other corner of the mouth. See how that lines up with the corner of the nose is just slightly to the right of that corner of the nose. First guess here was pretty good.
Okay, so we got the general placement of the lips blocked in. We don't need much more information than that. Um, what's missing? Side of the head on the right, this hairline. I'm going to put the hairline in quickly. Uh, somewhere up here. Checking just, you know, heights and widths and stuff from the eye to the hairline looks pretty good and then from the hairline to the top of the head this looks pretty good pretty close Did you say close enough for this stage Okay, I'm going to put the, the neck on the right side. That should be fairly easy. Just this small distance here and then the neck starts. Coming out somewhere around there. I can look at the negative shape between the ear and the neck. What that looks like. Help me get the right shape. It's a little bit too much angled. And then how far down does it go? Oh, kind of lines up at the bottom of the chin. Up there. And then how far out does it stick into the ear? So I'm lining up, lining up just with the ear to see how far out it goes. Oops. Not too much actually. Then where the low point is on the neck here. That's oh, way too low. To make sure that I get that new angle angling enough. So that lines up properly with what's happening over here in the bottom of the neck. Plumb line, this comes out a little bit more, and then it's, it goes up with, with this guy. Somewhere through there. Like Alright, he's starting to look like something. <clears throat> jawline will be the next thing. Jawline comes over 
and it lines up at the corner of the nose about there. Before it then angles up. Let's double check that. I made it a little bit too long. <clears throat> it means perhaps my point on the left is not right. Yeah. It needs to come a little bit more this way. Just so I get enough of a chin on him. Then up to that high point here. So now I'm moving between like these horizontal measurements, but also just using my eye to see spaces and distances between points. You know, negative space, you know, spaces in here, this distance, this distance. Make sure all these are looking like they're close to being what they should be. in a bit, goes up like this, and this comes down like that. <clears throat> All right, the, see the shadow on the left. here a little bit and lines up with the jawline. Check over all the width across the neck there and make sure that's okay. It's reading a bit wide. <clears throat> this needs to come in a little bit. piece needs to come over a little bit. This 
So now it's starting to be a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle, trying to get these pieces all to fit together, except you also have to draw the pieces and then make them fit together. Just get the, the very bottom of the shadow of the neck, the cast shadow. A little bit big. Somewhere. This line continues down to about here. This low points about there. These kind of connect up. That. And on the right side comes down in. So the more information you have, the more things you will see that need to be fixed, or hopefully you're more not, not you'll be confirming their guesses. Still working very generally though. the eye on the right placed the space between the eyes. I'm just going to eyeball that because it's fairly small space. You can measure it as well. Bring it in a little bit. The 
the high point of the shape on the right is a little bit below the shape on the left. So A little bit lower. down and we only get the width of that we can measure out from the ear in to see where it ends would be one good measurement Check that just measuring the total width of the eye. A little bit wide. shadow shape, or at the top of it, sits just under the high point of the ear. Shadow actually comes up on the side of the head there. You can start to place some of these other shadows in the hair. almost into half tones, just on the point of falling into shadow. Right. I just want to make sure I have enough space between that shadow and the outside. Mm -hmm. 
quite a bit. It's coming a bit. Bottom of the eye, shadow is somewhere about there. <clears throat> Comes down a little bit past that shadow on the left. For this stage, we can just simplify this to come straight across. You just want to get the general placement. All the, what's called the articulation would be the next step, refining from this big statement. You can see the tool, the uh, eraser is an important tool just to move lines around <clears throat> easily and quickly. So if you're working very generally like this and not specific, it's very easy to, to erase a line. You're not delineating a bunch of small details, it's just an edge. So it's one straight line up to the wrong place, you just erase it and move it over a bit. So I'm not, still not sure about the eye on the left. It looks a bit big. Yeah. Spacing in here is not right. So taking a measurement. Let's come over a little bit. Just it's right from my plumb line, which is the corner of the eye. Yeah, that's a bit better.
this point. Just to move up a little bit. So this can come up a bit. The bottom of the eye on the left, the left part of that is lower than the uh, part that's closer to the plumb line. <clears throat> Simplified. I need to go and actually delineate a little bit more of the, the eyeball. <clears throat> So I'm just going to finish up some of these hairline bits and bring us to the end of the construct stage. This could be an important line. Helps just keep an eye on the width of the temple and the width of the eye. <clears throat> Just going to delineate just the hairline here with these ghosty sketchy lines. They're not shadows, they're half tones, just to give us 
a little bit more information. the width of the hair a bit too thin. This little bit of shadow is really just on the, the rest of that ear. The side of the cheek on the right is halfway between shadow and half tone. I'm going to just call it half tone for now. And for this stage, just block in. The edge of the shadow is being about here. This is not getting shaded in yet. The next stage will be the articulation, which we'll go in and add more small details and refine all these shapes. So that's it for now for the construct stage.